Hello everyone and welcome back to another MSC chess game from the history of chess. And in this chess game we have two chess legends. In the white pieces we have Boris Gelfand, one of the super grandmasters and six times candidate for the world chess championship title and his opponent is Vladimir Kramnik, the 14th official world chess champion and this chess game was played in 1996. Well, let's see what happened in this chess game. Boris Gelfand starts the game with pushing to the pawn d5, c4, queen's gambit, the client, the slav defense, knight to c3, knight to f6, knight to f3, e6, and this is the semi slav defense. e3, knight from b to d7, queen out, bishop out, pawn up. And Gelfand is offering his pawn, but if capturing the pawn, then rook to g1 and then smashing in on g7. So, pinning the knight, unpinning, queen to e7, a3, bishop takes on c3, bishop takes on c3, b6, bishop out, bishop out, queen out, attacking the bishop, capturing the pawn, queen takes bishop, and capturing the bishop, and capturing back with the queen. And Kremnik castled from the king side, pushing the pawn, advancing. Knight in, bishop back, pawn up. And now in this position, Gelfand castled from the queen side. There is a saying that if both players castles from the opposite directions, that chess game is going to be pretty exciting. Pushing the pawn, king to b1, and advancing, shifting gears. Kremnik is advancing from the queen side, which is a pretty aggressive move, offering his pawn and the sacrifice was accepted. A pawn is a pawn. But now he has the file. Attacking the queen, defending, but now the rook is landing on b3. A perfect, perfect spot for the rook. Dislodging this rook is pretty difficult because now Kremnik is doubling the rooks and he is attacking and targeting on b2. Defending with the rook, advancing, pushing the pawn, Rook from h to c1, and now queen to e6, and lining the queen with the king. Moving back, and we can say that Gelfand is on the ropes. e takes on d4. But in this position, after e takes on d4, White realized that his position is pretty difficult to defend, so in this position, Gelfand decided to sacrifice the exchange. But in this position, if capturing the pawn, then rook takes on f3. And white is losing a piece. So in this position, seriously defending is pretty difficult. So for the defense, we have rook takes on c5, knight takes on c5. Queen takes knight. Okay. Black has the exchange, but white has one extra pawn. And now knight to c3 by Kremnik. He is extremely aggressive, but if capturing the knight, then rook takes on b1. So there is a pin. The b-pawn is pinned. This is why we have knight takes on d4. And in this position, Gelfand has two extra pawns, and he is also sacrificing the other rook. The exchange. But in this position, as you can see, this is forking the rook and the queen. We should not forget about that. Both the rook and the queen is under attack. What now? What would you do in this position? Well, in this position Kremnik captured on b2, sacrificing the queen, but we have rook takes on b2. But in this position, if simply accepting the sacrifice, then this is getting checkmated. Rook to a2, checkmate. So, rook takes on b2, and what would you do in this position? The queen is under attack, maybe defending the queen. Or maybe capturing the rook, and then threatening checkmate. If I give you 3 seconds, can you guess the next move of Vladimir Kremnik? He played the move and Gelfand resigned.
Well, Kremnik sacrificed the queen. What a move by Vladimir Kremnik. And after this move, Boris Gelfand resigned. Let me show you the possible continuation. Because this is the only continuation. Rook takes on a2 and then rook down. Checkmate. Fantastic. What a beautiful checkmate. What a beautiful combination. And thank you very much for watching. This was the pretty exciting chess game between Gelfand and Kremnik. And I hope to see you next time. Take care and bye bye.